Hello, my name is Allison Carmen, and welcome to my podcast, 10 Minutes to Less Suffering. Today, I want to talk to you about habits. Now, I know some of us have good habits, and some of us have habits that are not as beneficial for us. And the problem with the habits that we have that are not beneficial is often over time, they start to wear us down. They could wear us down mentally or spiritually or emotionally or physically. And the thing about habits is they're so hard to break because they've often been with us for a long time. But the part that I never really understood for a long time is that the reason why habits are hard to break is because when the habit started, it usually gave us some relief or some joy. And who doesn't want happiness in their life? I think that's where a lot of habits that are not beneficial for us start from. It becomes almost like an impulse. If I do this, I know I'll feel relief. If I do this, I know I'll feel happy. And the reason we want to feel better is there's something in our life that's creating some level of suffering. And people manage suffering different ways. And for me, often I have felt bad in my life that I can't stop certain habits. I've been trying to stop drinking coffee for an entire year. And the reason I want to stop drinking coffee is that it makes me feel jittery. It doesn't allow me to sleep as well. And sometimes I use the coffee to make my mood better. And so some of you might be saying, well, what's the big deal? Well, for me, it it makes me feel a little run down. And every day I wake up and I'm like, today's the day I'm going to stop drinking coffee. And then the minute I want to clear up my allergies a little bit, the minute I want a little more energy, the minute I want to be social, I drink the coffee because I feel the impulse for a relief or the impulse for a little more energy or or the impulse to be a little happier in the moment. And then like any other habit that we have for a long time that might not be beneficial to us later in the day, my energy can drop and then I won't work out. And then it's two o'clock in the morning and I can't sleep. So it's interesting for some reason with the coffee, I get to see the experience of what the habit does to me from the pleasurable part to the painful part. And again, that's why habits are so hard to break because for a moment, they give us something. Now, some of us, we eat too much, we drink too much, we don't sleep enough, we don't work out, we have sugar when we have a high sugar count, we have salt, we have high blood pressure. People have all sorts of habits. And I'm not judging our habits or or telling everyone you have to stop your habits that are not working for you. But it does affect the quality of our life when we continuously go for the short-term happiness. And then over time, it hurts us. And then we don't have the energy and the strength to possibly do all the things we want to do in our life. So there are three ways I found most productive if you want to change a habit. The first, of course, is awareness. It's so important that you're aware of why you have the habit. Because if someone says you have to give up sugar because it's not healthy for you, without an understanding of why you eat so much sugar, it's hard. I always find it's best if we understand ourselves, we're kinder, we're more compassionate to ourselves, but we also have more insight as to why we do something. And we figure out why we do it. We see, what hole am I trying to fill? What's in my life that makes me want to do this? What's my thought process? Where does my suffering come from? And like for me, it's very clear. Like I said before, I I could have an allergy. I could have not slept enough. I want more energy. I want to feel up. I want to feel more chatty. The quickest way for me is a cup of coffee. I know why I do it. Are there other ways? Yes. But this awareness has allowed me to go to step number two. And step number two is what other habits could I create in my life that might give me similar support? So I don't focus as much about giving up the coffee because that creates so much suffering. But I've thought about other things that can make me feel better, that can make me feel the same way that are more long-lasting, that don't create acid reflux or don't stop me from sleeping. So I've decided maybe I could work out more. 
Sometimes I try different drinks like kombucha or bone broth or tea, all these different things that maybe could give me what I need or what I want in that moment to lessen the suffering that I'm feeling. And I know this example that I'm giving you is not the biggest area of suffering someone could have in their lives. But a lot of us have a bunch of habits that do affect the quality of our lives, some smaller, some bigger. But sometimes changing one habit really changes things for us. And the third thing, which I think is the most impactful thing, is the recognition that we're looking for something outside of ourselves to make ourselves feel better. Now, sometimes there's a direct link. Sometimes you eat dairy, and if you get a stomach ache, well, there's a direct link. But sometimes, we're just looking for something on the outside world to just make us feel better about ourselves. And that's why cultivating a strong inner world is really the most powerful thing to kick any habit. And yes, that means quietness and meditation and yoga, something that makes us see that we have a world inside of us that doesn't have to move so much when something on the outside world happens that we don't like. I've had so many clients over the years that the minute something happens they don't like, they break their diet. They go out drinking. They become very angry and start lashing out to people they care about. And an inner practice helps us with that. It's not that we're not going to get upset but we're able to see ourselves separate from the outside world and know that there's something within us that could stay still. And again, it creates a more responsive life and a less reactive life. Habits are usually us reacting to outside stimuli that we don't like. So again, to break any habit or an awareness of the habit is always beneficial. Finding new habits, I guess you could say to crowd out the old habit or maybe something that will have that habit have less impact on you. And number three is creating a stronger inner world, which enables us to just suffer less. Because remember, so much of our suffering is from our fear. Yes, sometimes we actually have physical suffering. And an internal stillness will definitely allow us to have a better relationship with it. And a lot of our emotional suffering can be alleviated because it's from fear. Fear we're not going to be okay. Fear life is not going to work out. Fear about a relationship or a situation. But this inner stillness within us, it gives us hope. And it gives us strength. Because it makes us see there's so much more to every moment. And we have choices. We have choices how we want to show up. And sometimes we have choices how we want to suffer and how much we want to suffer. And often we suffer less when we could let go of habits that we choose that hurt us. So for me, a week before I've taped this podcast, I've implemented these three phases of breaking a habit. I've already shared my awareness. I've also shared with you my working out more and trying different drinks. But I've also committed to more stillness. And I've been doing yin yoga before I go to sleep. And I've been more committed to my meditation practice. And there were a couple of times this week I didn't drink coffee and I felt just fine. And when those feelings came up of fatigue or wanting to be more chatty, my presence was a louder voice. Because often when you're present, you're at peace exactly where you are. And that feels good. Like I talked about in that prior podcast, when this moment is enough, there's nothing that feels better. There's no cup of coffee. There's no sugary treat. There's no alcoholic drink. There's nothing that feels better than accepting yourself and accepting the moment for exactly what it is. So I hope you'll consider new awareness, new habits, and cultivating a quiet presence within to see if you can overcome your habits and find a beautiful, long-lasting peace within yourself. Thank you for listening to this podcast today. 
If you'd like to get in touch with me, you could email me at allison at allisoncarmen.com. If you'd like to read my book, The Gift of Maybe, it's available at all major bookstores and online retailers. And if you like this podcast, you could subscribe on iTunes and leave a comment.